Hey guys, Chris with Tillman Family Farms. Uh, today I want to do a little bit different video. Um, I've had some questions and comments on our chicken processing uh, area. And I think what I want to do, so I, I've done a chicken processing video in the past where we actually went through the whole process of, of kill, scald, pluck, eviscerate, all the way down to packaging with shrink bags. So today I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over the facility, the parts, the pieces, and what it took for us to get this approved through the state of Georgia to be able to process, package, and sell birds from our farm. So today we're getting ready to process some birds. Uh, I'm up a little early and, and I have everything set up. Uh, that's normally not the case. Normally I have a lot of help doing this and um, we were going to do this yesterday afternoon and we had a big fiasco with a bunch of pigs running around. So we didn't get to it, so I got up early this morning trying to get everything set up. So I want to hit the high points of the things that they came to us and said you're definitely going to have to have uh, to make this facility happen. And I'll show you how we got there, what we did, the pieces and parts we used, and all that kind of stuff. So um, first I'll start off with it had to be indoors. What this is is a portable carport from Harbor Freight. Um, I'll do my best to go back and put all of these uh, items uh, down in the description. So this was the shelter, okay? Um, we could do the kill, or the kill, scald, and pluck all outside, but when it came to eviscerate and all that stuff, it had to be inside, and it could not be attached to your house could not be attached to the house. So it can't be a carport, can't be a screen and porch, can't be anything like that. It has to be completely separate from the house. Um, the number two thing that they told us was a drainable floor, had to be drainable. So I fought and fought and fought and fought with that in my head. I was like, oh, I gotta pour a slab, I gotta put a drain in it. You know, do I build a deck with, with holes or, or uh, you know, slots between the boards? And all of a sudden, it just smacked me in the face. It was like, put a bed of gravel down, put the tent on top of it. So that's where we're at. We got a bed of gravel for a drainable floor, and then we have a structure, which is a tent. So the next thing that they told us we had to have was a three compartment sink, okay? And that is what this is behind me, okay? So you have wash, rinse, sanitize. After that, they then came back and told us that we had to have a separate hand washing sink. So I bought a utility sink, cheap old utility sink off of Amazon. It's got its own little faucet and everything like that. I've got some pavers down there under it to kind of keep it level. Um, the plumbing underneath all of this stuff, the, the three compartment sink, was donated to us from somebody else that had it at a I can't remember if it was in an old barn or something like that but they gave us all of the drain plumbing underneath it so I had to kind of basically figure out how to incorporate the plumbing from the utility sink to the three compartment sink and get that out so then what I did I ran a pipe a two inch drain pipe out of this building down the side of it and out into the pasture. We dig a pit, we fill that pit halfway up with gravel and we run that pipe into it. We cover it back with dirt. So that water is essentially, it's gray water, so it's essentially going into this gravel pit and leaching back into the ground, similar to what a drain field would on a septic system. Um, it, it goes out into that, that pit like that. So everything drains. Um, the next, part of the sinks was they said well guys you're gonna have to have hot water so we were already trying to figure out how to get water over here to this without having to put a water line in the ground and all that stuff so I made plumbing outside of this to where I can hook up a water hose um, it took us a couple of weeks to figure out I mean I, I mean I was about to run permanent power out here I was about to put a water heater in out here and all kind of stuff so we got to exploring that and we found a gas operated um, camping 
hot water heater that runs off of propane gas. So when we, so we set it up and take it down whenever we do this. So in a minute, I'll take y'all out. It's still dark outside, so I'm gonna have a hard time uh, videoing outside. But anyway, so it's hooked up outside. I configured the plumbing to where water would run through it. And then I have a whole separate line that comes in and hits the hot water side of both of these two faucets. So where are we at? <laughs> so we're at a gravel floor for drainage. We're at a building because we have to eviscerate inside. We had to have a three compartment sink and a hand washing sink. So then we had to have hot water. So we have a camping uh, propane powered gas water heater. Then they told us, well, your hand washing and your three compartment sink have to have a barrier in it so there's no con cross contamination. So I took some PVC pipe and a piece of plastic uh, beadboard and I made a barrier between them. It's just got T pieces down on the ground for legs. Um, so that, that created my barrier. So at that point, we, we thought there's no way there could be anything else. So then they spring the biggest, the baddest one on us, <laughs> which was you guys have to have a bathroom. And so bear in mind, this is over months and months and months and months and months. The people that we were dealing with, they seemed like they didn't know and understand their own laws and they were coming out to inspect. And every time they came out to inspect, it was something different. So, um, basically <laughs> it was another one. We fought and fought and fought and fought, but luckily for us, um, my wife and daughter, both barrel race horses, and we have a horse trailer with living quarters on it that has a bathroom in it. So we asked the question, when we process birds, can we pull that trailer up right out here on our access road so that that bathroom is accessible to this facility? And they said, yes, they approved it. So um, drainable floor building, three compartment sink, hand washing sink, barrier for no contamination, which you can do away with this if you separate them, but I was trying to keep it simple and keep all my plumbing together, okay? Uh, plumbing drain, gray water runs out into the pasture, into a pit, gravel, and then covered back up, um, and then a bathroom. Those were the thing, oh, and the hot water, hot water, I'm sorry. Uh, those were the things that got us approved to do this where we are right now. So it's kind of starting to get light. I'm going to take you guys out here and show you everything else that goes along with this facility and what we use it for and what we do. And then kind of how we go through this to get started to process birds. All right, so this is where it all starts. So these are kill cones. Um, we started off when we, we were doing this for ourselves. We just had one of these. We had just one cone when we were doing our personal birds. Um, but what, what we do is before we use any of this stuff, we spray the inside of them with Clorox uh, cleanup or, or something like that, just to get, kind of give them a coating. We spray soap and everything down in these buckets. And we will use all of these. And then we have one turkey cone so we use all five of these when we're processing birds so um, all of these will get used so we do we kill five at a time and as they're draining the first one that we killed will then go into this big pot that i don't have going yet but um so they'll get the scald here uh, we have found on the thermometer that we use which i'll grab that real quick um that on our thermometer which clips on the side of the pot and has this dial on it that when it is right below 150 degrees that a 60 second scald is perfect for what we want we we fought that for a long time we over scalded birds tore up some skin and uh, all sorts of stuff <clears throat> but from that they go to this this is a plucker um, this is a yard bird <clears throat> plucker. Um, 
this plucker has been through two seasons it's probably right around a thousand birds have been run through this thing um or getting close to it anyway hadn't had any problems with it thus far uh but it might do two birds at a time we don't we don't press our luck we, we have a cycle so um we do one bird at a time and when we go from that plucker we go to this tank okay this tank is a chill tank um water ice uh we've also started using um coke bottles full of water uh we'll freeze them um we will uh after they're frozen we'll put them down in here to get our water cold and and uh you know once they get to where they're melted we'll pull them out put some more in there when we're done with them we take them back there to our hand washing sink and we will um clorox them along with everything else when we sterilize everything so but from there from the the chill tank they go to this table and this table of course it's it's not ready to go it's not clean getting to that point i have cutting boards that, that go on this table i'll do the evisceration i have a, a big bucket that would go there for the guts that don't get used then in this table there's bowls for all the the parts so feet uh livers gizzards and hearts will all go into separate bowls on this table so that's where where uh, they get separated out um but from evisceration they go into coolers that are all lined up right here and these coolers will have water ice and salt um at the very least we like to let our birds soak for about 12 hours um, get them below 40 degrees that's the biggest thing you want to get these birds below 40 degrees as quickly as possible um, so that you can uh, you know kind of get them to that point to where they're not growing bacteria or anything like that that's very 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 important all right i thought it'd be best to wait till I got daylight good to video this part so this is the water heater okay so i want to explain to you how this thing works so it's gas powered so you have an lp tank um so it's propane and then you got this blue line which i used uh, to hook this up to keep it simple for us i went and bought some um uh, washing machine hoses so they come blue and red sometimes Ooh, that's some craziness happening um, anyhow so the blue one is where we get our cold water from and then I have the red one that feeds the hot water back in so the red one would connect here so I'm gonna hook this up real quick just so you guys can kind of see and then I'll show you how the plumbing goes into the tent. All right, so we're gonna start with our source coming in. So we, we run a water hose to here, which this hose goes into the, the actual PVC in the tent and hooks up there. And then it has a T on it. Well, that T feeds the blue, the cold water to the gas water heater. And then the red line back to the tent actually feeds I don't know if you see it. actually feeds a whole nother piece of PVC in there that all of my hot water lines come off of to the sinks. So pretty simple um, and this thing works great. It, it, uh, it actually will uh, heat the water in about 20 seconds after you turn the valve on. So pretty good stuff, but I'll leave the links in the description of this thing down below. So once all of this stuff is set up, setting up's the easy part. Then it's cleaning. We clean everything. We clean before we get started. If we take a break, we clean at the very least this evisceration area um, to get started again. So clean, clean, clean. The things that we use to clean are 50-50 um, Clorox and water. Uh, we use mean green uh, and we use ammonia to clean with, okay? So you clean before you set up 
or I'm sorry, before you get started processing birds and then you clean after you're done, you clean everything. So that means your chill tank, your plucker, your scalding pot, your cones, your coolers, your sinks, your visceration table, all of your cutting boards, all of your knives, all of your everything. Everything has to be clean, sanitized, and defunct, if you know what I mean. So um, that's really it in a nutshell. Um, you guys can go back and look at, go back through our videos and find an actual processing video. Um, we went through the whole thing, uh, you know, from the, the kill all the way through to packaging. So, um, uh, and I'll, I'm, I'll try to put a link to that down in the description of this video in case you want to go to that. But anyway, this was just a quick video on setup. It may not end up being so quick, but um, if you haven't done so, please go down and like and subscribe and ring that bell so you'll see all the videos we put out. I'm going to close this one down. Thanks for watching. Hope you learned something, and we'll see you on the next video.